Good morning. Good morning. Let me get this thing here rolling here, I think. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of people away today, uh, being with their families, being Mother's Day, and so we're a little uh, scary today. But we're glad that you're here with us. I'd like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day and uh, hope that you have a good day today. Uh, the flowers here today was given in memory of uh, Catherine and Randy's mothers. Um, this is where the flowers was come from today. Um, now, how many got to see the Northern Lights yet? Do you mean that you seen them? Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna tell you. Oh, you've seen them. Well, well, just a few. I think tonight's the last night that you can see them. Uh, I'm going to try to venture out tonight, and I'm going to plan on going up to Bethel and that open area up there. That's pretty, pretty place up there, and see if I can spot them. Uh, so if you want to see them, I think tonight's the last night you'll get to see them. It's a, a rare occurrence for it to happen down here. Uh, so if you get a change, do that. Now, don't forget, if you're planning on going to Southport and Fort Casual, you better sign up uh, this, well, just today and let uh, Kathy and them know how many's coming. Uh, they're going to leave at 7.30 in the morning. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got a bunch of people lots to sleep in, don't we? And well, I'll tell you one thing. I've had a good week of sleeping this week, haven't I, Lonell? I was up 44 hours straight. Then I was up 36 hours straight. The reason why the nail snores so bad. <laughs> nah, but I, I don't sleep well anyway. But I tell you, I've had a, a tough week this week. Uh, uh, you know, at nighttime, normally you, you're supposed to go to bed and go to sleep. But I've had a, a, a struggle this week. But, but anyway, we made it through. Slept good last night. Praise the Lord for that. Um, now, at the end of the month... And Kathy, I need to talk to you uh, sometime very soon. We're planning on having a testimony day here at the church. And it's set for the last Sunday in May. We've got three ladies that uh, will give their testimony. We may have time to work a few in. But, it, you know, I, I want to do this. I think it's something that uh, uh, we need to do from time to time. Uh, Somebody can tell us how they became a Christian and uh, things like that. But we'll give their personal testimony. So I'm looking forward to that. So that's the last uh, Sunday in May. And I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit further. In June, we're going to have, what are we going to call that, Janice? Singspiration. Sing per sing per sing uh, it's, I have you say it. So I, I have a hard time doing stuff like that. And uh, we're going to have some of our folks to be singing here. And then after we get through, we'll have uh, uh, dinner. Uh, I don't know what we're going to have just yet, but that's the last Sunday in June. So uh, keep those things uh, before you. And uh, if you get a chance, you see somebody that we've been missing for some time, uh, let them know that we miss them and like to see them back in church. So please uh, try, try to, to do this. Does everybody feel good this morning? Amen. Everybody love the Lord this morning? Amen. Okay. I didn't throw nothing in there. I didn't try to trick nobody. <laughs> but I just want to see if you're alert and, uh, and all that. But before we go any further, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank Thee for the night rest. We thank You for this beautiful day You woke us up to and woke us up in our own mind. And, and Lord, we thank You for that. And Lord, we thank You for this day that has been set aside that we uh, honor our mothers. And, and Lord, we thank You for them. And Lord, I know that some, uh, their mothers weren't the best in the world. And somehow, some way, Lord, they still made it through. And Lord, they might be the best mother that coming from a home like that. So we thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us of our sins for the things that we said, thought, and done to this please thee. And Lord, today we just ask that you have uh, your will and your way in this service. And let us all today, Lord, uh, be glad that we're in the house of the Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name. 
Amen. Miss Brenda. Thank you. I know the bulletin says we're going to honor their mothers, but we're going to do it at the end of service. Yeah, I'm going to let you There's do that. There's been a little bit of change in it. Okay? So, y'all, we'll get you out. 
Ini If you have a 
copy of God's Word with you today, I encourage you to turn to the book of Luke. Chapter 1, verse 37. This is a verse that you should be able to memorize this pretty easy. And it says a great deal. Verse 37, if you don't mind, please stand as we read this portion of God's Word. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. May God add his blessing to this portion of his word. You may be seated. <clears throat> My son, one of my daughters, my son-in-law, and my youngest grandson with us today. Um, Pastor Carl, sometimes he gets changed on messages. Got to give him something at the last minute. And I have toiled with this since yesterday. Uh, the one I wanted to sing, I thought I needed to sing, can't find it. I think it's back there somewhere. And so... Uh, I think this is the song I'm supposed to sing this morning. Um, we all know that the next event on the calendar is the rapture of the church. And as a mother, there's nothing, nothing more important than knowing that your family is ready to meet Jesus. Amen. So, midnight cry. Amen. the sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet sounds the chords and at the midnight cry we'll be going home when Jesus steps up on a cloud to call his children Dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. Then those that remain will be quickly changed Amen. at the midnight. Cry when Jesus comes again. I look around me, I see prophecies fulfilling. And the signs of the times They're appearing everywhere And I can almost hear the Father As he says, son, go get your children Thank you, Jesus And at the midnight cry 
The crowd of Christ, we're going to rise when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain, they're going to be quickly, quickly changed. And at the midnight cry, when Jesus comes again, and then those that remain, again at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again when Jesus comes again Amen Amen Bless your heart. The Lord put sweetness in her mouth this morning. I, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you now that, that hitting it out of the ballpark today, but bless your heart there. Mm. I know this, uh, you know. I'm glad Janice went through some of this not knowing what to sing today. It makes me feel comfortable now. <laughs> I only thought that happened to me. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a terrible thing when you... I, I plan ahead uh, with my sermons because uh, you just never know what's going to happen during the week. And uh, if you wait to the end of the week or the last hour to get a sermon together, it's best you don't preach. So I, I, I try to stay way ahead. Um, I give uh, Janice and Catherine my sermons and my scriptures way ahead in, in advance. And I notice there's been times, and, and I tell you, I'm going to tell you how close they've been. There's been times I sit in that chair and I said, I don't know what I'm going to preach. I got my notes and everything. I said, but this ain't it. And then when I get up here and I, I look at Catherine because she's got it in the bulletin when I'm preaching from, and then I say, turn to this. And it's like she's scratching her head. I, I don't think I've got this in there wrong. <laughs> but, um, and this is what happened this week. Uh, I usually don't preach on traditional Sundays when it's Mother's Day or Father's Day or even Christmas sometime. Uh, sometimes I just don't preach on those subjects. It, 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 I don't know why. I just don't do it. I can't give you a reason why. Uh, but to, to this week, it's, it's been a little different. Um, uh, I just couldn't get, a, get away from doing it this time. So today I want to share with you four special mothers mentioned in the scripture today. There's four of them. There's several in there. You could choose several in there. Uh, I know Mother's Day is a, is a tough day for those whose mothers has, has gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, you have memories of them and that, that, that is so sweet. Uh, but not everybody has good memories of their mother. Uh, their mother could have abandoned them when they was little. Uh, didn't show a lot of motherly love towards them. Uh, now, I was in a unique position myself. 
there was a time I was mother and father. Uh, and I enjoyed it, by the way. Uh, I know when me and Linnell was dating, she'd come down to the house. Your mama cleans your house, don't she? I said, why do you say that men don't keep a house this clean? I said, sometimes women don't. <laughs> but I kept my, I, I enjoyed it. And uh, uh, many a night, uh, being enjoyed, they slept in the same bed. I'd go in there late at night to check on them. And I'd sit down on the side of the bed and I'd pray. I said, Lord, I, I want you to use these boys. I, I don't want them to struggle like I did with job to job. Everywhere I went, I closed plants down. I mean, I, I've shut down more plants than Obama did. Uh, I told I had 28 churches to contact me about being their pastor. And one of them said, well, you know, you got a unique situation there is you and your two boys. And I don't know if it'll work out here. And I kept saying to myself, and then one day a church called and was talking to me, and I said, I declare, it looks like it, my luck, I shut down so many plants, and to be my luck, God calls me to the church and the rapture takes place before I get to preach in it. <laughs> and I think that scared that church away. <laughs> Because right after that, there was more contact with me. So I said, that church must not be looking forward to the rapture. But, um, but it's a, a, a special, special gift to be a, a mother. It really is. And, and, and to really be a good, good one. Uh, each one of these mothers I'm going to uh, touch upon tonight... Uh, they, they produce great men who God chose to do great works for his people. If these women was not godly women, God would have overlooked them. He wouldn't have chose a lady that there was something about her past or maybe something that she was doing that was not right with uh, God. And so he would overlook that, that one. When God calls a godly man from the womb... Their mothers must be godly women too. Now these women that I'm going to be mentioning today, I believe this is the, the, the fact in their case. Three of these mothers had some type of connection with the priestly tribe of Levi, for their husbands was priests. Uh, that, as you look and study, you realize that these, these women that I'm going to be talking about, they were the exception of one. Uh, all had connections with that priestly tribe of Levi. So they was well aware with the customs of their husbands. So their children would be good examples for their father in obeying God's law. You know, it used to be old saying that the preacher had to mean his youngins. Well, the reason they had to mean his youngins, they played with the deacon's children. <laughs> that's, that's what my mother always said. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I was a bad child by no means. Uh, I mean, I wasn't a perfect child, but uh, I knew if I'd done anything that was going to uh, get me in trouble, I didn't fear my father that much. I mean, he's only, I can only think of a few times he had to, to I call it a whipping. But my mama was the disciplinary in the family. And when she stuck that tongue out as she got ready to strike you, <laughs> You knew it was going to hurt. So she was in charge of that part. But not all priest children behave right in the sight of God. We have examples in there. Just like today, these four women played important roles in the life of these men that God gave to them. These women played a, a major role in their life. And, and it was things that dealing with the Lord... And I would just encourage mothers and grandmothers today to remember that the things of the Lord is very important. And you may be the only Bible that you, that your grandchildren or great grand may ever see. Because so many young people today are turning away from the church. But these ladies had something in common. And the first one I want to deal with is Jochebed. Now does anybody know who Jochebed was? 
Ah, now listen, y'all know we had her on our questions. It was, she was the mother of Moses. She's first mentioned in Exodus chapter 6, verse 20, and the next time in Numbers chapter 26, verse 59. But there's not a whole lot of description about her. But there are some things mentioned that you can gather information from. But she was the mother of Moses. In Exodus chapter 2, she is mentioned but not named. And uh, you know when you read that, that, that's who they're talking about, his mother. Uh, Jacob had hid Moses for three months. Because you know that during this time is when Pharaoh was beginning to kill all the little boys. And for some reason, which we may not know, she hid Moses. Now the fact that she hid Moses must have meant that some of the Israelites' women allowed their children to be killed. Now they came in and killed most of them when they found out that they just had a baby. But she hid Moses for three months. Now the scripture says that he was a, a, a goodly child. But, but, but somewhere I believe that Jacob knew that Moses was a special child born to her, that God had his hand on her, I, I, on him. I, I just believe that, that she knew there was something about Moses. She said, I've got to protect him. Can you imagine trying to hide a baby for three months? They cry. And uh, they make noise. Can you imagine trying to hide that little baby when the Egyptian soldiers would go around trying to find little boys so they could kill? It'd be an awful thing, wouldn't it, to try to hide? But she did for three months. But she came to the point in her life where she said, It's impossible now. I've got to do something. And she said, I'm waiting on God. I believe she waited on God to get instructions. Now, it don't say that in the Bible. But she had to do something in order to come up with the idea of saving Moses. So I believe this was God's plan. The first thing I want to mention to you about Jochebed, Jochebed was a woman with great faith to do what she did. She had to have a faith a whole lot deeper than most people. Can you put your child in a basket, put it in the Nile River, and push it off? Now, I don't think I could have done that with my two boys. I loved them too much. I, I, I believe I'd have fought forever to keep from doing that because all I could see was danger. Can you imagine putting a little baby in a basket and send down the river? Oh, she had great faith. Her faith was different than regular faith. She didn't have regular faith. She had great faith. And she probably then heard the story that one day God was going to send a deliverer to free us from the bondage that we're in. And maybe she said, this may be our deliverer. But to put him in a basket, you know, you really, really, really got to have great faith. I remember the first time Ben wanted to go to the store. I lived out there on Chalk Road. And I didn't want him to go. He wanted to go by himself. I said, okay, I'm going to let you go. But you better stay 20 feet off of that road. You go in that store and you get what you want and you get out as fast as you can. So he takes off. Lord, please don't let no car be coming. That's why he's up that way. He goes up there and he comes back and Joy said, how was it being? Oh, it wasn't no fun. Daddy was looking the whole time. <laughs> when it comes to your family, you don't take risks. But she had great faith. 
I want to ask you this morning, the ladies, do you have great faith? Or you just have faith? I think we need great faith. I'd like to stop here and ask all of you, uh, all the ladies, would y'all done what Jacob had done? I mean, would you, would you to put your son or your daughter in a basket and send him down to P.D. River? Mm. Look at the dangers that her child faced in the Nile. It could have flipped over in the water. An alligator, I mean, I don't have alligators over there. They have crocodiles. I've seen a crocodile. Ooh, Lord, have me. you know, a dentist would love to pull those teeth. I had a tooth pulled and it cost, I don't have much money. A man could pull out get a crocodile's tooth, he can retire. And I've seen one as long as these pews. Big old things. And they end the Nile River, by the way. Now she had to know that. And then they got those hippopotamus. I love the hippopotamus because it reminds me of a hog. I love a hog. Hog is the best animal on the market. How many, how many of you like sausages? Pork chops. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you. So a hippopotamus reminds me of a hog in the water. And I'm going to tell you, I've seen, I, 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 look, I go watch gory stuff on the internet. And they says I'm crazy. But I've seen the one where a, a, a hippopotamus bit off a lion's head. He stuck his head in his mouth and he bit it off. And I've seen the hippopotamus. they big too. Um, but she put Moses in that river knowing it could tilt over, a crocodile could get him, a hippopotamus. But I want to tell you something. I think she remembered the story of Noah. Because some of the same language in there when she made the basket was the same language used when Noah had built the ark. The, the basket that she used was a type of an ark like Noah used to save his family. You know, it rained and rained and rained, but the boat never sunk. And this is why she knew it wasn't going to sink. Look at the dangers our children face today in our country. Oh, I'm telling you. We got crocodiles out there, but they're two-legged. Look at all the sex perverts we've got. I go on the internet sometime and I, I look up if there's any sex perverts around our house. And so far we don't have them. They way off away. And some of these fellows I, I recognize. Our children are exposed to people like that. And then the drug trade. We better pray hard. We better pray hard that our children will avoid that. I went to doc, I went to Mr. Daniels, the lawyer, one time for some stuff I needed to check into, and he had a picture of a beautiful, beautiful blonde-headed woman. I mean, she was a doll baby. Robin, women would men would fight over her. That's how good looking she was. I was looking at it and I said, boy, if I was one month younger, I believe I'd go chase that girl. <laughs> and then when you flip, it says flip. And it took me a long time to figure out what flip meant. Okay? I don't know what that means. He wanted you to flip the page. And I flipped that page and Lord have mercy. It looked like something got a hold of her and it couldn't turn it loose of her. I mean, she looked awful. Sores all over her face. It was the same girl, but look, 120 years old. And these drugs are out there today. Our children are in danger of that. Oh, I'm going to tell you, then the, the pressure to change your sex is out there now. Oh, man, have we gone crazy in America? I mean, when I was in school, I'm sure there was some funny people. When we found out about it, we normally beat them up. 
We pounded into their head and they decided they liked the opposite sex, okay? <laughs> but today, uh, they are encouraged to, uh, to change their sex. And I can go on, I can go on and on, but our children are in danger too. And if we're not a good mother or a good father, we're letting them go out there in a society that wants to eat them up. Uh, there was um, a time when the church, and I hope we still try to do it, try to teach our children the ways of God. That's why Sunday school was so important. That Sunday school teacher is so important. They, they need to teach them things that maybe they're not going to hear from their friends or from school. We need godly women to do that and men. But we also need people with great faith like she did. But there was another lady, another mother that I want to mention. This is one you're pretty familiar with. Hannah was a mother who asked of God. What you mean asked of God? She didn't mind talking with God. Now I want to say, if you prayed and prayed and prayed for something to happen, and it didn't happen, and now it's gone past the time, past the time that things could happen, would you still pray? Here was a lady that's way gone past the years of bearing children. Biologically, she knew, I, I, can't, I can't have no more children. I can't have a child because for some reason I've never been able to get pregnant and now I'm too old. But yet she still prayed. She was still praying that God will give her a child. Now, can you imagine praying for something that you know your biological clock has done a run against bell? But she kept on. She kept asking God. She was persistent. Uh, when I was a, a child, I would oftentimes get bad colds and run high fever. I had asthma, but I don't remember it. But I had it real bad. And I can, I can still remember uh, my mother coming in there where I was at, and she pulled up a chair and she sat there to make sure I was okay. I would wake up during the night and she was still there. And I can remember her, said, she said, boy, just go on back to sleep. I'll be here with you. If, if, you, if something happens, I'm right here. I go back to sleep and wake up and she was still there. And there was been a few times that I would wake up and I can still remember her lips moving. Couldn't hear nothing out of it, but her lips was moving. You know, Hannah was moving her lips, nothing was coming out, and the priest heard her, thought she was drinking. And then he discovered what she was talking about. But I can always hear my mother tell me, she says, son, just go on back to sleep, I'll be here. And then when the sun come up, she'd go in the kitchen and cook breakfast and take care of us. But my mother was praying for me and even though I was sick. She, she prayed and I would get to feeling better. And I'm so thankful for that. But Hannah was not afraid to ask God anything. You know, my father used to tell me, he said, son, if you want something from the Lord, ask him. Ask him. He owns everything. It's not like he's broke. Have you ever heard your parents tell you, well, I, I try to get it, but right now money's a little short. God got a big pocketbook. And he can dig right down in that pocketbook. But he wants, he wants us to ask him. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to communicate with him. He enjoys that. So she asked of God. Um, and then she, when she asked him, she was expecting him to come to. Um, and then guess what? This old, old lady, 
who'd gone past the years of bearing children, one night, her and her husband got a little frisky. You don't know what I'm talking about, don't you? Don't say that like you would. What's he mean by that? You know, sometimes you want to kiss and hug, okay? <laughs> well, guess what happened? Poor old Hannah got pregnant. <laughs> that was a very frisky night, by the way. And she had already promised God, Lord, if you let it happen, I'll give him back to you. You mean to tell me all these years you wanted a little boy and now when he, you're going to give him back? Yes, sir, I'm going to keep my word. When she asked for something and God delivered and she kept her end of the bargain. She was a woman who asked of God. These next two women are in the New Testament. Let me check my, my time here. Oh, Jesus. These next two women are in the New Testament. Now, I want you to try to figure out who the last one is going to be. You, you get some clues here. They were kin to one another. Like Hannah, one of these was unable to have any children. Anybody getting a hint? You know who we're talking about? But she couldn't get pregnant. But here's the good news. But there was God. <laughs> Don't ever exclude God from things. You know, you may get bad news. Well, there ain't nothing I can do for you. This is it. You can turn around and say, but there is God. Oh, he has the final say, don't he? Dr. Queen was our family doctor. And I don't know if he did this with everybody, but Dr. Hugh Queen would pray for you sometime. He would. He, he prayed, and he, he sent up good ones. And I can remember him saying one time to me, don't ever count God out. Her husband was like Hannah and Jochebed. Their husband were priests. Anybody got a clue who I'm talking about? The mother's name was Elizabeth. Beautiful name. And Elizabeth was a woman who believed God's word. You can find that in Luke chapter 1, verse 45. She believed God's word. Like Hannah and Jochebed, Elizabeth was very knowledgeable of the duties of the office, the priesthood. See, all three of these women had a connection to the priesthood. They married priests. They knew the functions of it. And they weren't stupid of the laws that, and the, the things that they was talking about. They had knowledge of it. So naturally, they knew when something happened, they could count on God. And Elizabeth believed God. You know, it's a wonderful thing that a person, a mother or father, that their children knows that they believe in God's word. They may correct them at times. Well, why are you doing that? Because God says it's wrong. Mm. But listen to our parents. You know, I've told y'all before, I could never imagine my mom and daddy being teenagers. I, I just, I, I mean, I, I can't even think about it. It kind of makes me sick. Because all I can remember of them is at a certain, t they were sort of old folks, okay? I just don't remember them being young, you know. I think my daddy was 34 when I was born. I think you're old when you pass 30, so you can imagine how I felt. <laughs> now that I'm getting older, you know, 34 wasn't a bad age, okay? I mean, I wish they could go back to in the 30s. But, but here was Elizabeth. She knew the office of the priesthood. She knew what prayer was about. And uh, she believed everything that God said. And she believed that all things are possible with God. I love to hear people say, say that. That means you can dream the impossible dream. You can go where the brave dare not go. You can live the impossible dream with God. She knew when things... Uh, it got bad, she could count on God's word. 
Uh, you know, David made this statement. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. He didn't say it didn't happen. He just said, I've never seen it happen. These three women all had those things in common. Great faith, one who asked of God, would be willing to talk to him. But I want us to look at this last mother. Anybody kind of figuring out who this might be? You probably figured it out who she was. How many think they know who it is? Raise your hand. Okay. She became a mother at a very young age. She was a young lady, probably between the ages of 14 and 17. When the news came that she was pregnant, she was not married. Ooh. That was, back in those days, that was pretty bad. Today, we just accept it. This was not good. She could be stoned to death for this situation. How would her parents understand? I never will forget. <laughs> I was over at J.P. Stevens one day, picking up some stuff to work. This man was a superintendent. He called me Peanut. He said, Peanut, my girl came home last night. I said, yeah. She thought she was a little bit pregnant. <laughs> and he said, I've been trying to figure that out. He said, either she is or she isn't. He said, I think she is. But can you imagine going to your parents the parents my age and older, you know, I, I think I'm pregnant. Ooh, Lord have mercy. You'll be wanting to find the nearest faraway place you could find. <coughs> she had to deal with that. And then, what would her fiance with this kind of news? One thing I do know that mothers, good mothers have in common, they worry over their children, don't they? It doesn't matter if your, children, your child is 50 years old, you still worry over them. You know that? Aren't you glad that you do worry over them? That means you love them, you care for them. I remember the day me and Anel took Ben to UNC to start his education. Now, it was bad enough he was going there. <laughs> I mean, of all places, UNC. Why couldn't he went to state? And I remember getting everything in on that hot August day, and boy, it was hot. A thousand people trying to use the elevator. Sweat rolling all over the place. And we finally got everything set up. He was on one side of the room, and they was on the other side, and I was on the other side, and it hit home. I'm going to have to leave in a few minutes and go 80-something miles back home without my boy. And I started crying. I don't mind telling you. I, I, I don't mind telling you. I cried. Because he was going to have to be on his own for the first time. And me and Linnell wouldn't be there to help him at the very moment maybe he needed us. We'd be there. But it'd take a while to get up there. That's when you know you love your children. That's when you worry about them because you love them. But when it comes to our children, these four women had the same thing. They worried that brings me to my last mother, which is Mary, the mother of our Savior. Jochebed, great faith. Hannah, asked of God. Elizabeth, believed God's word. Mary, the mother of Jesus, who learned to trust God. The night that Gabriel came and told her that she was going to conceive. Mm. And she said, I don't know a man. Don't you worry about that. God's going to take care of that. She had to trust God more at that moment than any time in her life. 
Can you imagine in that time frame and the way they were about things, can you imagine the, the, the weight that was on her? Who was going to believe her, okay? And another thing that'll blow your mind, Jesus was going to be older than his mother. <laughs> Figure that one out. And she had to pray to her son for forgiveness of sin. She was not a perfect lady. She was a good lady, good, good lady. But she was, you know, she had some sin in her life too. And she had to ask her son. Isn't that something? Figure all that out. But she learned simply to trust God. When things didn't even make sense, she trusted God. And folks, I'm going to tell you something. If it hadn't happened to you yet, it will happen. There'll come a day when you think, God, what are you doing? It don't make sense. And when that comes, just remember, you still trust him. Because one thing I knew, Mary, and I read it, she learned to trust. Learn. You just don't get it at one time. She learned to trust God. And all of these women had all these things in common. So on this Mother's Day 2024, if you want to be the best mother or grandmother you could ever be, seek these four things that these mothers had and put these things into practice. Possess great faith like Jacobid, the mother of Moses. Ask of God like Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel. Believe in God's word like Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. And learn to trust God like Mary, the mother of our Savior. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this time we've had together. And Lord, we thank you for our mothers, those that know your word, understand your word, and those that does their very best to pass that along to their children. So Lord, we come at this time and we just ask, Lord, that you bless each mother here today, each grandmother here today for the work that they do to keep us safe. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.